My friends, it is such a pleasure for us to welcome you to the Lady Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church. You are about to experience one of our worship services that we have every Saturday morning, starting at 11 o'clock and ending at 12 noon. Our address is 231 Lake Griffin Road, Lady Lake, Florida, 32159. We're very excited. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 37 and 38, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We certainly invite you along with the Lady Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church congregation to be that laborer, to answer the prayer that Jesus asked us to pray. We ask that you will be blessed as we now go into our church service. Thank you so much for being here with us. And heaven, Lord, you have heard, you have heard us share with each other the, the excitement that we have on our hearts, the cares that we carry, the burdens that slow us down, the blessings that we have experienced. And we know, Jesus, that because you are in control of all things, that you have only allowed into our lives what would be best for the growth of our relationship with you. Lord, may we see all that happens in our life as a blessing, a blessing whereby you are seeking to draw us closer to you. We are excited about what you are going to share with us today from your word. And we ask that you will give us wisdom and discernment as we read from these references as we discuss the topic of love. Father, we do praise you that you are not a God that only healed people in a book called the Bible, but you are the God that heals people today. We thank you for allowing us to experience that, for allowing us to see your power in action. Bless us today, Lord, so that we can be a blessing to everyone we meet this coming week. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Boy, brother, you're, you're good with that organ. Praise Jesus for sharing your talent with us. How many of you no longer hear the hum that comes from the organ? You no longer hear that hum? It's like, this is like a hum-free building right now. It's, it's good. And uh, I want to thank Lamar for, for investigating that. And a guy came and simply unplugged an amplifier and retuned the organ. And here we are, hum-free. Um, hum-free. Well, that's sort of like a name, isn't it? Hum-free. Is everybody here? Okay, everybody's here. So you, you all got a bulletin insert. I don't have one up here with me, but maybe someone will share a bulletin insert with me. You got a bulletin insert about Madeline. And uh, the only other Madeline I know was on a movie. So for me, your, your daughter is like a movie star. And so I'm going to ask um, Michael and Jennifer, we know her as Jenny, if they will take their daughter or are all their daughters, however many they want to, to display, they're so precious. Did you make those dresses or did you buy those dresses? Oh, the grandparents made the dresses or bought the dresses. Which one was it? You bought them. Oh, that's an easy way to go, isn't it? Praise the Lord for, for people that know how to do those things and for a job that allows us to buy those. So I'm going to ask you guys to go to the back because there's a significance in everything that we are doing here. So if you'll go to the back, you can stay here inside the sanctuary. Now, we have all participated in baby dedications where the pastor does, does all of the work. 
This is not the, the, the case here at the Lady Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church. The parents are the ones that are dedicating this baby to the Lord. So what is going to happen this morning is that Michael, as the priest of his home, as the spiritual head of his family, is going to bring this baby along with his wife and their other two daughters. He's going to bring this baby, Madeline, to the Lord. Now, in this play that we are doing right now, I'm going to represent the Lord. I'm by no means the Lord. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But in this, this drama that we are enacting here, I will play the part of the Lord. So Michael and Jennifer are going to bring their baby Madeline to the Lord, and they're going to hand the, the baby to the Lord. And then I will take the baby. Um, I'm sure the Lord could hold the baby himself. Um, but typically, we don't see the babies floating in the middle of the air. So then I will hand this microphone to Michael, and Michael will offer a prayer asking God, thanking God for this baby, and then dedicating this baby to God. Then what's going to happen is I am going to take this baby because uh, as God created families to take care of their babies. And so once that baby has been given to God and the, it has been recognized that this baby does not belong to them but to God, God is then going to ask Jennifer as the mother of this family to take care of this baby for him. And then she's going to ask God for help to do that. She's going to address God as well. And then I'm going to address the family and then the general church family. So that's how this is going to take place right now. So is it going to be such a big deal if I come off of the platform? Is that going to be such a big... I should stay up here so that everybody can see these babies. No, no, no. We should stay up here, Mr. Bob, because they've got to see this baby. So I'd like to invite you all to come to the front at this point. That was so precious when you showed up, Papa. And she said, Papa, and came over and gave you this. So please come up. Please come up here. Gave you this big hug. That was just precious. You know, these children are the reward for you not killing him when he was a, a child. You understand that? Yeah. Yeah, this is your reward. And so, so what I'm going to I'm going to share this with, with Jenny, and then she'll hand that to Mike. And so what Mike is doing is giving his baby to God. And, oh, my lands, how old is she now? Three months today. Three months today. You think she'd cry if we sing her happy birthday? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Madeline. Happy birthday to you. We made it. Now, so what you are going to do is you're simply going to pray. You're going to say, God, here's, here's this baby. It's our baby. You say to God whatever you want to say about your baby. Dear Lord. I am blessed and humbled by the gift that you've provided to me, little Madeline. Assist me in her safety. Provide me with guidance when my hand needs to be soft and when it needs to be firm. Assist me in your will being done with Madeline and not mine. Amen. Amen. God accepts your baby, my brother. He accepts your baby. God has, God has lots of things to take care of, and so he has created this beautiful lady named Jennifer to, to care for this baby while you're at, at work grinding away and bringing home all those big, big, big bucks. Uh, you have this wife that is at home probably much more stressed out than you will ever be at work because she is taking care of precious gifts for God. And so now God is giving this baby back to you. You have given your baby to God. God is giving this baby back to you and asking you guys to care for this baby. And so uh, if, you will, if you will offer a prayer as well, Mike can hold that microphone for you. Right. Dear Jesus, today we're here asking you for your blessings and your guidance to be able to guide Madeline <clears throat> into the right path. Give us the, um, 
sabiduría, um, to know what to do at the right moment, um, give us the love, the patience, lots, lots of patience to be able to provide um, the best caring and um, loving education that we can for our kids. Bless us, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Would you like to say hello? Say, hello, Papa. Hello. Say, hi, Papa. Hi, Papa. Hi, Grandma. Hi. Say, hi, Grandma. Hi, Would you like to say hi? Hi. <laughs> 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 doesn't get better than this. <laughs> say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so before y'all leave from up here, I'd just like to have your family stand. And uh, just recognize that your family is here. So please, if you are related, abuela, if you are related at, at all, please stand. And Melanie's going to take it. Why don't, why, don't you, why don't you come up here? Let's get a nice picture. Come on, a nice picture where we can, you can watch us. It's like being at Olin Mills. You know, everybody gets to watch you get your picture made. Don't they have a beautiful family? Don't they have a beautiful family? Praise the Lord. And there's your camera right over there. Take a couple, sweetheart. It's digital. They can delete them if that's wrong. <laughs> oh, how precious. So, so, so who are all these people? Help, help us out here. This is my dad. All right. Your dad, his name? Uh, Mike Moore. Mike, oh, just like you. Just like oh, you're a junior. Is he a chip off the old block or... Yeah, better, better. He's better. He's All right. Better. All right. This is uh, my, my grandma. Oh, um, God bless my you. Dad, my dad's mom. And this is Esty. This is my father's fiance. Okay. And with Annabelle. And this is uh, Dr. James Coy and his wife, my mom, uh, Joellen Tarantino Coy. All right. And anyone behind you? Oh, not. <laughs> this is Jenny. This is my wife. Of course. She takes care of everything, keeps the house together. Uh huh. Lots of glue. And uh, this is Abuela, Jenny's mom from Venezuela. From Venezuela. She's been staying with us for over six months. Bienvenido aquí. All right. So we're, we're just so glad that all of you are able to be here as you watched your son and daughter give this baby to the Lord, and then the Lord asks you to take care of it. So I'd like to ask you as a family members are you willing to help them care for this baby and raise this baby for Jesus? All right, now let's see what kind of support we get out here. If you are willing and, and very, very ready to help raise this baby to love Jesus, would you just raise your hand and show this family? All right, so you have lots of babysitters here. You have lots of uh, people that, that love to take care of babies. And so if we could ever wrestle them from the grandparents' arms, that'd be sort of nice for us. So God bless you all. Thank you so much for being here for this special occasion. Yeah. Let me give you a stronger part of me. How about that? Well, you managed that like a champ, didn't you? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, look, I could have had that picture up the whole time. Right there. Isn't that baby adorable? Melanie. No. Foster, foster parents. My friend uh, Walter Williams, many of you know Walter Williams, he usually sits in the back uh, over there and he shares a testimony each week. He received a report this week from the physicians that he is too old to get this assist pump that will help blood go through his body in a much more pressurized manner. And so he received some, some pretty depressing news. Um, he's usually the one that says, I just praise the Lord that I'm alive. And he was the one that was in hospice that called 911 and said, they're killing me in here. So 
he was, he, he, he's back in the hospital now because he called 911. He was in Avante Rehab Center in Leesburg. He called 911 and said, I need to go to the hospital. Come get me out of here. And I guess they're obligated to do that when you call 911. So uh, they took him back to the hospital and then he received that news. But this, this phrase, I feel loved up in here, is a phrase that uh, was coined for me. Somebody else I'm sure has said it by Brother Walter Williams. He said that when he goes to the hospital, he's, he belongs down to the Leesburg uh, church and he goes to the hospital in Leesburg and he says that, that the people from the Leesburg church come to visit him every time he goes in the hospital, every time he goes into a rehab, every one time that he went into hospice. Uh, he says, Pastor Scott, I just feel loved up in here. And he uses that body language too. I was visiting him with him this week at Leesburg Hospital. And he said to me, and, and you, you just have to understand, this, this brother's 86 years old. And uh, some of you are knocking on 86 and you're not in his condition. Praise the Lord. Um, he's 86 years old. He said, Pastor Scott. And he talks with his eyes closed half of the time. I know what my body needs. I said, Brother Williams, what, what does your body need? He said, my body needs sorbet or chocolate. <laughs> I said, Brother Williams, your body needs sorbet or chocolate. He says, I know. If I got, and then he opened his eyes, Pastor Scott, I know if I got sorbet or chocolate, oh, it would feel so good. <laughs> My friends, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. She may not like sorbet, but I can guarantee you she likes chocolate. Need to. Do something special for your sweetheart tomorrow. My wife's marking this down. I want you to know that. <laughs> Do something special for your sweetheart. She's going to live in anticipation the whole day. I feel loved up in here. How is it that people feel when they are around you? Do they feel loved up? when they are around you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're going to open your word. We're going to study it. And we are going to see your love in action. Your love in words. Your love described. Help us to grasp the depth of your love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just want to let you know this evening that um, Clayton is going to be presenting on the theme of the great controversy. You may have forgotten last night in the excitement of it being Sabbath that we began an evangelistic meeting, a prophecy meeting last night. And so the second one of those takes place this evening, 7 p.m. right here. And uh, Clayton will be presenting for us. Uh, and Clayton is watching online right now, so it's good to see for you to see us. And, uh, and Rachel as well. We're looking forward to seeing you this evening. We have been doing a series on the topic of the fruit of the Spirit. Let's go in our Bibles to Galatians and the fifth chapter. Galatians chapter 5. So the New Testament book of Galatians. This is after the Gospels, after First and Second Corinthians. Then you have Galatians. We are in the fifth chapter. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Now the Bible says here in Galatians the 5th chapter and the 22nd verse, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is. Now the word is is singular. The fruit of the Spirit is, and then it begins to list the fruit of the Spirit. How many of you have an orange tree in your yard? Does anybody have an orange tree in your yard? Okay, we're coming to visit. Uh, because there are some oranges that are coming into season. An orange tree, Lamar. Maples are blooming right now. My, my backyard just smells like heaven. 
Your backyard smells like heaven. So if you want to know what heaven smells like, go to Lamar's house. Melanie. Yes, sweetheart. I'm about to talk about that, but you can tell the story if you like. Okay. She, she said, you had orange juice off of our trees this week. And it's true. When you take an orange, you pick a piece of fruit off of the tree. And then when you peel that orange, if you're careful, none of the little orange juice containers that are inside break open and you get nothing but this this yellow stain on the outside of your fingers and it's underneath your fingernails. You know what I'm talking about. You've peeled an orange before and and once you peel that orange in all different pieces and maybe even different sizes, maybe even different shapes, you have these pieces of this one orange. Now, if you were to disassemble that orange and put it all over the place, don't put it in front of any of my kids or it'll be gone, but you, you, you put this, this orange all out there and you look at it, how many oranges do you have? Okay, we'll start over. We began with one orange. We peeled it. We took it apart into its pieces. How many oranges do we still have? One orange. But we have different what of that orange? Different sections. Oh, there's a technical word. Different sections, different pieces of this one orange. The fruit of the Spirit is when you you peel the Holy Spirit back, you see these fruit that are all contained in this Holy Spirit. Go back up to verse 17. Verse 17 and verse, let's see, yeah, verse 17. No, 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 verse 19. It says this, verse 19 of Galatians 5 reads, Now the works of the flesh are, that's plural. So you have all of these different works of the flesh, and then you have this fruit of the Spirit that although it contains many different sections or pieces, different shapes and sizes, it is one fruit. When you get the Spirit of God, you get this fruit. Fruit that contains all of these different sections. Go back down to verse 22 again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Nine sections of this piece of fruit that the Spirit of God gives to every person. Now, uh, here in Florida, we're familiar with these Oranges. By the way, I told you that we've got some fruit trees in our yard. Our lemon, now understand this, our singular soul lemon, the only lemon we have on our lemon tree is getting ripe. It's getting ripe. I'm just keeping y'all updated. Maybe we'll invite you over for a swig of lemon aid. It'd have to be a swig because there's only one lemon, you understand. <laughs> one lemon. It's getting ripe. Why am I telling you about my lemon? I don't know. Here, say again. It was citrus. Florida, thank you, Samantha. Ooh, she's following. Here in Florida, we are familiar with citrus fruit. And when you take, when you, when you reach up and you start to pull on this orange, if it doesn't come off real easy, guess what? It's not right. Love is that little stem that holds the fruit to the branch. Love is that little piece that when something is ripe, it lets it go so that it can produce more of where it came from. The Bible says here, the fruit of the Spirit, and it begins with, is love. We have talked about faith a fruit of the Spirit. We have talked about joy that transcends our current situation, a fruit, a a section of that fruit of the Spirit. We have talked about meekness, a section of the fruit of the Spirit. And today we are going to talk about love. I feel loved up in here, according to my brother. Walter Williams. Love is the fruit, first fruit mentioned in the list of the fruit of the Spirit. Because on love hangs all of the other fruit. A misunderstanding of the depth of the word love confuses all of us. 
Please share with me, what are some things that you love? Now, pretend you're not in church. Pretend you're hanging out with your friends at whatever shop you like to hang out at, whatever restaurant you go to eat at, and you're having casual conversations so you don't have to spiritualize your responses this morning because you are in church. What are the things that you love? Yes, sir. Riding my motorcycle with my friends. Yes, ma'am. Dogs. Dogs, especially the hope of this new dog, right? Do you have faith that you're going to get this dog? Yep. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You will get that dog. Somebody else. Melanie. Spending quality time with those you love. Oh, my wife is sharing with us all her love language. <laughs> Spending quality time. I've got one in the back there. You love your mom. Ooh. Oh, Lynn. Someone else. Samantha. Horses. In the back there. Yes, sir. Oh, your wife. You are smart, man. Someone else. Your wife's cooking. All the way to a man's heart is right through his belly button. Isn't that right? Yeah. Somebody else. Something that you love. Riding a motorcycle, dogs, quality time, horses, wives, good cooking that comes from our wife. We say we love all these things and we use the very same word to say that we love God. Is there a difference in the way that we love horses, motorcycles, wives, and the way that we love God? Is there a different quality to that love? Some say it should be. The Bible says that God is love. When you and I love something, typically we use that word to describe what we appreciate, what we are fond of. Love. I like this little thing. I found this on the internet. That's two fingers hugging each other. I'm all yours. I'm trying to give all the guys in here huge hints. If anybody forgets tomorrow, it won't be your pastor's fault. <laughs> Valentine's Day, gentlemen. Even if you don't believe in the concept, you married the girl, treat her well tomorrow. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 3 and verse 16. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the third chapter and the 16th verse. We know the context here. Nicodemus is meeting with Jesus at night. Jesus has talked to Nicodemus about being born again. Jesus has talked to Nicodemus about the wind blowing and you hear the sound. You can't see where it comes from. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And then Jesus in this meeting with Nicodemus. Now rem remember, this is not somebody else talking. This is Jesus talking. Jesus is the one that is sharing this information with Nicodemus. And Jesus says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now remember, Jesus is the one saying this. So Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and He says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That would be me, Jesus is speaking. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him, that would be me, Jesus talking, for whosoever believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved us so much that he gave his only son. You're a papa of three girls. Which one would you give up for somebody else in this room? Be honest with me. Not a one. Over your dead body, right? Yeah, not a one. We have not yet comprehended the depth of the love of God. Once we comprehend, and I'm not saying that I comprehend the depth of the love of God. Give up one of my kids for you guys? I don't know. I do know. I just didn't want to be so blunt. No. No. How could Moses pray, Lord, if you're not going to save the children of Israel, then just blot me out of your book as well. The only way he could say that is because of love. Love changes everything. 
The Bible says, right after Jesus tells us about how much his dad loved the world, he didn't say, for God so loved me that he gave me to be the substitute for your sins. He said, for God so loved you that he gave me to be the substitute for your sin. And then he says in verse 17, let's read that. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus came not to condemn, but to save this world. This is what love motivates us to do. Love motivates us to consider someone else better than ourselves. Love motivates us to let somebody else have the bigger piece of toast at the breakfast table. Love motivates us to allow somebody else to order first at the restaurant. Love motivates us to let somebody else have the last breadstick in the basket at Olive Garden. Love is the motivation that heaven accepts for everything that we do. We're going to look at love as this, this gift in Jesus Christ. How do we exercise this type of love? It's interesting. Matthew said this, Jesus speaking again in Matthew 5, 44. Jesus says, love your enemies for real how can I love someone that is my enemy? By definition, I don't love that person. Don't forget, it was while we were yet enemies that Christ died for us. You and I need a love that exists and originates outside of this atmosphere around planet Earth. We need a love that originates from the heart and the mind of God. Love gets rid of gossip. Love gets rid of backbiting. Love motivates us to be nice to each other on days of the week that aren't Sabbath. Love motivates us to give of ourselves when the world wouldn't be giving. Love motivates us to be different in this world than other people. Bless them that curse you, Jesus said. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which spitefully use you and persecute you. You know, we have a record in the book of Psalms where David is praying, Lord, destroy my enemies. Doesn't sound too loving, does it? My friend, we don't need the heart of David. We need the heart of God. We need the heart that is willing to give of ourselves to the point of death. Love as a gift is seen in the life of Jesus Christ. Now let's see how Jesus exercised that love. In light of the gift, let's see how Jesus exercised that love. You're going to go with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I was talking with Pastor Nelson um, coming up here from Leesburg, and, and he said that this is one of his favorite passages of Scripture. John chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. John 8, verse 1. Jesus went up unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Now, in order to be taken in adultery, you had to have at least two witnesses that witnessed that, because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. So here you have these scribes and Pharisees that evidently had set this woman up, because they, two of those scribes and Pharisees, catch this woman doing the dastardly deed that she was doing. Two, uh, the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. It's obvious that this woman is guilty as can be. And when they had set her in the midst, they sent him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Then they look at him, shaking their ever-righteous finger, I am sure. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, tempting him that they might have something to accuse him with. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Do you know how hard it is <laughs> to not talk to somebody that's talking to you? 
You know how hard that is? Jesus doesn't answer them. What do you think we need to do with this lady, Jesus? She was caught in the act. We have eyewitnesses and Jesus begins to play in the sand. It says here, So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one. And I love the way that that John put this. You know, John was a young man, uh, not when he wrote this, but when it occurred, he was a young man. He says, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. Do you know, older people have a lot of wisdom. They, They know when it's time to be quiet. Of course, some haven't mastered that, but anyway, they know when it's time to be quiet. The oldest went out first, and then Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Jesus lifted up himself. He saw none but the woman, and said unto her, verse 10, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Verse 11, she says, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Him the world might be saved. Here's this lady. Jesus says, Where are those that are condemning you? And she says, I don't know where they went, Lord. And Jesus said, Well, then neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Love in action covers up a multitude of sins. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says that God is love. Love covers a multitude of sins. I had opportunity in, in my ministerial career, which is, you know, it's not been all that long, but I had this couple that came to me in my office. They said, Pastor Scott, we need, to, we need to have a conversation with you. They said, okay, let's talk. They were, they were both Bible workers. They said, uh, Pastor Scott, we've... And they began to cry. They said, uh, we, we have broken the commandments. I began to cry with them. They said, I've broken the commandments as well. They say, you don't understand, Pastor Scott. We've, we've broken the commandment, Pastor Scott. I said, I, I think I understand. They said, Pastor Scott, we are not worthy to be Bible workers anymore. I said, isn't that how it is? Just now we realize we're not worthy. Pastor Scott, we have committed adultery. I said, who knows about this? They said, God, this guy, this girl, and you. I said, nobody else knows about this. They said, nobody. I said, the two of you need to knock this stuff off. Quit it. Go out there and win some souls for Jesus. Pastor Scott, you you don't understand. I said, I understand very, very well that you broke one of the commandments. And you want to beat yourself up for it. That's not Jesus beating you up. That is the devil beating you up. And he wants to beat you plumb out of ministry. If if lots of people knew about this, then you would still be serving Jesus. You just have to serve him in a different location. I said, knock this nonsense off. Go out that dirt. Wipe your tears up. Stay in here till your tears are gone. Go out there and serve Jesus. And teach these kids that Jesus has a heart full of forgiveness and not condemnation for them. They said, Pastor Scott, we thought you were going to fire us. I said it was a good possibility. It's a very good possibility. 
She needed to quit this nonsense and serve Jesus. Those two people are still involved in ministry today. My friends, the moment that we feel that we are better than someone else, we have failed to recognize the exercise of love. Love does not lift itself up. It is not proud. Love is an action. 1 Peter 4.8 says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. My friends, this morning, Jesus is telling us that we need to forgive those that have hurt us. Love in action. Love as a gift. Is it your desire to stop playing the game of loving Jesus and to truly allow the love of God to motivate you to action so that others can experience what a forgiving God is all about. Is that your desire? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Father, we so often just want to condemn what we see in others rather than to simply lead them to the one that forgives them. Lord, teach us how to be good lovers. Teach us how to show people that come into this place, people that we meet at our job, people whose lives we are intimately involved with and those that we are just casually involved with, Lord, Teach us how to make them feel loved up in here. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Of 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. I pray that your week this next week is filled with sharing love with other people. God bless you. Have a good week. Friends, again, thank you so much for joining us here at the Lady Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church. Sometimes people ask us, you know, how can I support this ministry? How can I support putting this ministry onto the internet, onto different Roku channels? And so we'd like to answer your question. To the right of your screen on your computers, if you are on llsda.com and you've clicked on the media link, you'll see a donate tab. We encourage you to return God's tithe to Him and then to give God offerings as He has blessed you. Some people say, you know, I'm not comfortable doing that over the internet. How, how would I send money to, to return my tithe via a check and to give God offerings on a check? Well, you can send that to the Lady Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church, P.O. Box 609, Lady Lake, Florida, 32159. Again, thank you so much for serving the Lord Jesus Christ and being faithful to Him as a harvester in His fields that are ripe with harvest. God bless you.